Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week's video is gonna be a mixed media speed paint. It is mainly watercolors, but I use different mediums toward the end to touch up the painting and to add details that is harder to do with watercolors. So here is a picture of all the art supplies that I used for this artwork. If you want to see them closely, pause the video and take a look. All the names will be in the description box. This illustration was drawn and inked and it stayed in my sketchbook for about 4 months. Then I decided to color it for this week's video. Lately, I've been using Copic markers for my videos all the time. I do use watercolors and colored pencils, but I don't use them for my videos often because they take more time to work with. And that means that the videos are gonna be so much longer. But I love watercolors. I used to work with them a lot before I got my Copic markers. And I still use them so much. But when I need to finish something in a shorter period of time, I usually go for markers. Watercolors need patience and you need to build up the colors and take your time with them. Which I enjoy so much. And I find it relaxing and it's so much fun. Anyway, for this picture, I wanted to make the scene looks like it is a picture that is taken when the sun is about to set. The room lighting is dim, but the sunlight hits the girl from behind. So the girl's front should be darker because she's in the shadow. I started looking up in the internet for pictures and paintings with the same lighting effect that I wanted to create. After that, I started working on the picture. I started with the background and I did the first layer, then I put down a layer of a peachy color for the skin and I kept shading. At first, it looked horrible and I didn't want to continue coloring because I hated it and I thought that I ruined my line art. However, I kept working and building up the colors because if it's already ruined, I have nothing to lose. The good thing is that you can't go wrong with watercolors. Of course, that's when you are using the, the right paper. You can build up on the colors or lift up the paint from the paper. It's really amazing how much control you can get with watercolors. When I was in school, I used to hate watercolors because they go everywhere and they wrinkle the paper. Our teachers let us use them on the normal sketchbook paper, which is usually very thin. Of course, they wouldn't ask us to buy expensive watercolor papers because we were kids. But that negative experience caused the hate relationship that I had with watercolors when I was a kid. But I started working with them again because I studied interior design in college and we had to use them in the first two years of college. This time, I tried so many kinds of paints and papers until I found out the perfect materials for me. But until this day, I am exploring them more and more and I am trying different materials and techniques with them because I still need to improve. At this point, my favorite watercolor sets are the pans. I don't find watercolor tubes practical to me unless you squeeze them in a palette that you can easily reach for anytime you want to color. And my all-time favorite is my Sakura Koi watercolor sketchbox. I have the smaller set that comes with 18 pans and I love them. I take them out with me because they are so practical and the quality of them is really great. My other favorite set is my Gansai Tanbi watercolor set with 36 large pans. They're Japanese traditional watercolors and they are really beautiful. They come with a beautiful range of colors and they are really high quality. I am using them in this video 
with this set from Artist Loft, but you can see them in the video because they are out of the frame. My favorite watercolor paper is by the brand Canson. The paper weight is 300 grams, which is great for layering and using lots of water. I also love this paper that I am working on right now, which is by the brand Dela Rowney, and it is also 300 grams. The Canson paper is really smooth, but this paper has a rough surface and visible grains. The description on this sketchbook, the Dela Rowney one, says that it's not cold pressed so I'm not sure what you can call it but sometimes I feel like working on a grainy paper because it gives a really cool effect with watercolors I wouldn't recommend using the grainy paper if you're gonna use other mediums with your watercolors like if you're gonna use your marker it might ruin the tip of the marker and if you're gonna use your colored pencils um, they wouldn't look as smooth if you want to blend them unless you like the grainy colored pencil effect You will see me towards the end using my colored pencils to touch up the picture. They weren't blending easily because of the grains I recently tried the mixed media paper from Dela Rowney and I loved how the watercolors look on it It's really smooth and it is 250 grams which is also good for layering watercolors. I love the brushes that I'm working with in this video and they are by the brand De La Rowney and Da Vinci. Um, I also love working with water brushes when, when I'm not working on my desk and my water brushes I, are by the brand Sakura and Pental. Now let's talk a bit about the illustration because this video is getting so long. My main goal was to use warmer colors and lots of shading and lighting effects in this picture. I kept coloring but I was feeling that the picture needs more balance. Then I decided to add the trees for the outside view and I think it looks better this way. My camera turned off few times at the end of the video and also I didn't film the whole thing touching up process with colored pencils and fine liners because this process took a long time and I didn't want to bore you with all that but I think that I showed all the important parts of the speed paint so I'm fine with that by the way I am filming this video from a different angle actually this is my old way of filming from the side in my older videos I thought I would try it once more to see if it works better for me now what do you think? I am going to end this video right now and I tag you all to talk about your watercolor story. You can write in the comments or do a separate video about it. Also, please let me know what you think of this illustration. Comment down and subscribe if you like my channel. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you in my next video.